A lot of us have probably heard of the phenomenon of ghost cities in China, entire cities that have been built with fancy villas, lakes, parks, high-rise apartment blocks, huge shopping precincts. They're only missing one thing — people. As Dinny McMahon said in his book China's Great Wall of Debt, the phenomenon very much has been driven by the debt splurge that really kicked into gear after the global financial crisis. Local governments around the country tried to juice and stimulate their economies by building more infrastructure and stimulating the property market. This seemingly wasteful construction is carried out by both state-owned firms and private companies. Private property developers will build housing in places that end up being ghost cities because they believe in the ability of the Chinese property market to only go up and up and up. Now, in some parts of Sydney, we're seeing a similar phenomenon, although on a much smaller scale. In the suburb of Carlingford, about 22 kilometres northwest of the Sydney CBD, there are a large number of new multi-storey apartment developments, which were approved during the housing boom. However, from all reports, they're just not selling. A perfect storm is brewing in Sydney's apartment market. According to SQM Research, a property data agency out of Sydney, rental vacancy rates across Sydney hit 3.4% last month (May 2019). That's the highest level since 2005, the year that records began. Vacancy rates in the Hills District in northwestern Sydney hit 5.8%, with some parts reaching as high as 7%. Vacancy rates in the City of Sydney, that is the CBD and surrounding suburbs, reached 5.4%. By the end of 2019, about 54,000 new apartments that were built in 2018 and 2019 will hit the market, causing an oversupply. Dr Andrew Wilson, chief economist at My Housing Market, said that some parts of Sydney could now be described as a ghost tower environment. He said, We've come through a massive apartment boom in Sydney, and now we're at peak supply. It's all combined to create those empty towers. Louis Christopher, founder of SQM Research, spoke of the impact of foreign ownership on the Sydney property market. He said, "...some foreign investors buy properties to keep as a storage of value. It's like buying a gold bar. They'll buy and hold and keep it shut for the whole duration of their ownership. They prefer to leave their properties empty to avoid wear and tear and make it easier to sell them quickly when the market turns. Apart from adding up rental vacancies, listings and anecdotal evidence from developers and real estate agents, it's difficult to quantify exactly how many unoccupied apartments exist. But we do believe there is a fairly large component, especially in new apartment properties, that are simply unoccupied. The Australian Federal Government have tried to discourage this practice of buying and holding new property by introducing a foreign owner's vacancy tax back in December 2017. Owners are charged a fee if their property is not occupied or rented out for more than six months a year. However, this tax only applies to property that was bought after the 9th of May 2017, around the same time the property boom was subsiding. Carl Fitzgerald, Project Director at Prosper Australia, spoke of the focus on developers rather than the community. He said, "...we actually prefer to call it manufactured scarcity, and it's done to deliver the best outcome for the developers, with little regard for the community. For some it makes more economic sense to keep vacant rather than rent out or put on the market." So what are your thoughts on the Sydney property market? Is it just one big glut, with some owners holding out until they can sell for a profit? Are some suburbs of Sydney turning into ghost cities in the same vein as China? Is the Australian property market just one big rort, where a few rich developers make money, but Joe Citizen doesn't benefit and is just priced out of the market? Where will this all end? 